Jaime Augusto Miranda Zobel de Ayala II, also known as Jaime Augusto Zobel, a name you may have probably never heard of before. Yet this very Spanish sounding name is a man who has ruled one of the largest and oldest conglomerates to ever live in the Philippines. The man himself, a Filipino billionaire, is the owner, chairman, and board member of some of the biggest firms locally and even globally. Throughout his lifetime, Ayala has sat as the chairman of the Bank of the Philippine Islands, one of the largest banks in the Philippines, chairman of Globe Telecommunications, one of the only two telecom providers before Dito Telecom's entrance, and of course his family's Ayala Corporation. Globally, on the other hand, Ayala is also a member of prominent institutions, such as the Tamasek Holding Board, known for Singapore's Sovereign Wealth Fund. He is a member of five Harvard University committees, advisory boards and councils, and is also a member of the JP Morgan Asia Pacific Council and its International Council. Such a prominent businessman is indeed worthy of taking reign over one of the largest corporations in the country. And yes, just as he paved the way for his career, he too has been a proud alumnus of Ateneo de Manila University, Lady Cross School, a preparatory school in Southeast England, then studied in Worth School before he earned his bachelor's in economics from Harvard College, and eventually getting his MBA from Harvard Business School. Then again, who is Jaime Zobel? And most likely the average Filipino may not even have heard of him, and arguably only his corporation. Well, let us trace his business career throughout his time working for his family's business known as Ayala Corporation. When his father, Jaime Zobel de Ayala y Pizitz, retired in 1994, Augusto succeeded him immediately as the company's president and CEO. And indeed, Augusto, who graduated with his MBA in 1987 and age 35 years old, is now the CEO of a company that posted 2 billion pesos in net income in 1993. Many expectations were placed upon Jaime Augusto. This was, after all, one of the largest conglomerates of the country, so finding a new footing and path that Ayala Corporation would take next will be a challenge. Jaime Augusto, however, in an interview in 1995 with the Asian Wall Street Journal, said that the basic philosophy will not change. That could mean continued growth and segmenting of its market position in the Philippines. Hence, it was also understood by several analysts during his transition that Jaime Augusto will dive deeper into technology. Before he transitioned to becoming the CEO, Jaime Augusto had already been exerting force inside Ayala Corporation as a leading figure when it comes to technology. He was the one who steered the conglomerate into the software and electronic network business. Hence, throughout the next few years, he would go on to transition the company to focus more on technology. Ayala's subsidiary, known as Integrated Microelectronics, had seen a drastic change from 1995 to 1998. IMI is also the electronic manufacturing service provider of Ayala and saw its manufacturing site move along with an expansion into offering hardware and software design services. By 1997, Augusto was seen partnering up with regional companies. One of them was when Singapore Telecom had landed a deal with Globe Telecom to launch its expensive rollout of landlines. Regional expansion, as an article from Financial Times back then, cited that under Mr. Ayala's leadership, regional expansion has become a new trend. Augusto Ayala said in an interview that once upon a time we used to look to the West, to the US, Europe, and Japan to bring investment in. Now we're partnering with the likes of Singapore Telecom. The Singapore partnership, however, was not the only strategy initiated by Augusto. The partnership has included Japanese-based Mitsubishi, Hong Kong Land, and even JP Morgan. By the end of 1997, despite seeing the Asian financial crisis happen in earlier months, had seen the company post a net profit of 6.3 billion pesos, more than triple what it was back in 1993. By the dawn of the 21st century, several political instabilities would occur. Seeing the resignation of President Joseph Estrada was a key part of the start of the century. Little is known, however, that amongst the thousands of protesters in the crowd was Jaime Augusto, who saw the protest chanting Estrada slogans. Hence, when the resignation came, Jaime Augusto had been a big backer of Vice President-turned-President Gloria Arroyo, who has also garnered endorsements from top business organizations around Manila. Prior, however, Augusto's actions in the earliest years of the 21st century were not limited to his political attachments. But rather, as an article by the Financial Times cited a new vision, Jaime Augusto had embarked on to present his company's vision for the new economy, presented exactly in March 2000. The presentation saw Mr. Ayala shift the company away from a slow-moving conservative image to one straining to be at the forefront of the internet and e-commerce. Having owned the country's largest telecom provider, Globe Telecom, was a chance to prove that. Part of the Ayala Group, known as iAyala, was going to link with Globe to develop mobile internet access via wireless application protocol technology. 
Mr. Ayala cited that internet access in the Philippines is likely to increase via mobile phones, given their increasing popularity and relatively low computer penetration rate. Chief Economist Jojo Gonzalez from Merrill Lynch in Manila even said that Ayala is clearly ahead of its peers, using technology to expand their business positions. Mr. Ayala, not limited to his dreams of developing mobile technology, has also pushed BPI into internet banking, and even saw I. Ayala announce a $15 million in venture capital funding to support dot-com startups. While it was announcing expansions after expansions, however, it also sold one big company up its sleeves, Pure Foods Corporation which it sold to San Miguel Corporation for 6.6 .6 billion pesos in 2001. Partly because it wanted to use the money to expand in other businesses, but also to retire its debt. By 2004, Ayala Corporation was seen hitting 43.6 billion pesos in total revenues, with about 7.1 billion pesos in net income. Globe Telecom, on the other hand, had grown massively with net service revenue of about 52.7 million pesos and over 12.5 million subscribers as it continued to present its strong wireless services. Its success in simpler words had grown ever since Jaime Augusto had taken the helm as the company's CEO. Part of the reason? Their regional strategic partnership, which Jaime Augusto had initiated a few years back. BPI had Singapore's DBS Group as a 20% partner, whereas Globe Telecom had Singapore Telecom as a 24% shareholder. In other words, these world-class Singaporean firms were bringing technology and experience to the Philippine market. His father and predecessor were cited as being proud in Asia Inc., a magazine from Hong Kong, after the relentless way they pursued digital mobile phones and made Manila the world's texting capital. The next challenge, however, was to develop a 150-hectare former military base near the booming property of Makati's Central Business District. Exactly eight years ago in 1996, they had failed their bid to win the development of Fort Bonifacio, which was won by Hong Kong's first Pacific. Yet their deal collapsed, leading Ayala to acquire the stake. And yes, that led to the construction of Bonifacio Global City, which was done through Ayala Land. Between 2005 and 2006, however, Jaime Augusto would lead the company yet again, on a different path. First in 2005, it sold some of its shares to Singapore Telecom, which was about a 5% stake for the price of 6.6 .6 billion pesos. Secondly, it was also in that very year of 2005, that the Bank of Philippine Islands, its banking subsidiary, had entered the Best Bank Award and was the only bank in the Philippines named for that award. Why? Well, BPI had continued its sheer scale of growth. Its annual report in 2005 has shown that its total assets had grown from 402 billion pesos in 2002 to over 529 billion pesos by 2005. By 2006, Jaime Augusto had announced a big move. After Ayala Corporation had acquired a stake in the call center, operating company known as eTelecare Global Solutions, and as he stated, they're looking for more. This matters because Jaime Augusto said that he planned to open more call centers in the Philippines and is hoping that the revenue from this industry will yield a surge of about six folds by 2012. In other words, if we compare what they did in 2006 to today, they have indeed become a big player in the entire call center industry of the country. The world, however, would not continue to grow. As evidently shown in the 08 and 09 global economic crises, this set an alarm for Mr. Zobel. Hence, in April 2008, he would set an announcement that the company will be taking a hit, expecting that they're now expecting slower growth, which by the third quarter of 2008, saw their profit plunge in several subsidiaries. IMI fell by 13% in net income, whereas companies under the entire conglomerate fell by 25%. Despite dropping income, the company has still continued to pursue capital expenditures, meaning they kept trying to grow the business. They even sold more stakes from Globe Telecom, which was picked up by Singapore Telecom. In mid-2008, Singtel held over 47.3% of Globe, whereas Ayala held just 33.5%. Jaime Augusto attributed the sale because they want to reallocate and turn over capital to start a new investment cycle. Throughout the next decade, Ayala Corporation would continue to see growth after growth. Ayala Corporation's share price would rise from a share of about 300 pesos in 2010 to as high as 948 pesos by 2019 before COVID-19. And as of the time of writing, it's currently trading at 750 pesos a share. Likewise, the company's growth was seen through actual statements. Total revenue grew from 174 billion pesos in 2015 to over 251 billion pesos as of the latest 12 trailing months. But anyway, what do you think? Let us know down below. Thanks for watching.